Well, there we have it. England's Euro 2024 journey has come to an end. And again, it hasn't come home, unfortunately. I am denied about whether to make a video on this one, if I'm being totally honest, because there's already been a lot of instant reaction from every England fan. I think everyone's feeling the same, to be honest. We got outplayed by Spain. They were the deserved winners. We just weren't good enough, really. I think, you know, we played on the back foot too much. We didn't have the same quality on the ball that Spain did, and they came out on top as they deserved to. But I have given my reaction for every England match throughout the tournament, so I thought I would round off with one final video, because there are big question marks now for this England side. Does Gareth Southgate stay on? Who will be in this squad in the next two years for the World Cup? And what needs to be tweaked to get this team to finally win a competition? Or if we miss the boat, but well, those are two golden chances and we may now regress from here. Like I say, I'm not going to pick through the match too much because I think the problems were pretty obvious. It comes down to two things really. Spain hit us with pace, particularly through Nico Williams, and we were unable to deal with that down that right hand side. And they were just so much better at keeping and using the ball than we were. You saw it every time they picked up the ball in midfield. They turn so instantly and drive towards goal. Whereas England, by contrast, as we saw throughout the tournament, were laboured, they were uncreative. And we were reliant once again on our subs to change the game. Ollie Watkins coming on for Harry Kane, which to be honest, he should have pulled him at half time because he did make a difference. Harry Kane, I've got to say, unfortunately, that's probably got to be his last tournament where he is in the starting lineup for every single match. And as I say, Cole Palmer, we've been calling for him game after game and he came up trumps again with that excellent finish from Jude Bellingham's ball. But it just wasn't enough because we had them on the ropes. We had that pressure on them for five minutes and then we just regressed again. We just got a little bit further back Jordan Pickford could not do anything but kick the ball long. The ball kept coming back to us and then we were just picked off and killed off right at the end. To be honest, I don't feel too upset about it because we did get to this final with so many moments of luck. I have said as well, there was quality in those moments, but this just showed that you can't win a tournament playing like that. We threatened to come back from the dead once again but you just cannot get over the line in a final playing that kind of football for six, seven matches. And to be honest, all the problems that we were worried about before the tournament have come back to haunt us in this final. We were worried about our fullbacks, we were worried about who's playing in midfield, and we were worried about whether Harry Kane was gonna be fit enough to play up top. All three of those things were issues for us in the final, and we got caught out by it. There's been a lot of talk as well about big players not turning up for the final. Phil Foden, seven matches, no goals, no assists. Declan Rice, he put us into serious trouble multiple times. And for some reason, once again, because it worked so well last time, Jude Bellingham's out playing on the left. Like I say though, we can pick out individual players and say that they've not turned up. But it all comes back down to the manager to me, ultimately. Throughout this tournament, we have not been playing the football that we should have been playing with this squad. At times, we've barely been able to string two passes together. And that all ultimately comes back to the manager. I know he's got us in back-to-back -back finals, a semi-final, a quarter-final. It's an excellent record. But just tactically, again, we've come up short. I mean, not to detract from Spain's win. They have obviously been excellent in this tournament. But this is not a brilliant Spain side. It's not one that wasn't there for the taking if we really went for it. And to be honest, we needed the same approach as them. Pace on the wings. We've been calling for it all tournament. This is how you win football matches in the modern game. It's pace. It's doing things quickly. It's opening teams up. And we just didn't do that enough. I do have a lot of respect for the progress that Gareth Southgate has made during his tenure. He has made us a respectable side again. He's improved the setup behind the scenes. He's brought unity to this national team. I mean, you go back to before his time as England manager and no one really wanted to play for England. So these are all really positive things and the foundations have been made to help this team progress. But I just don't think he can go any further as England manager. This team is now screaming out for fresh ideas, fresh faces. I mean, Spain are the perfect example, right? With De La Fuente coming in to replace Enrique. And within 18 months of making that decision, they're Euro winners once again. Part of me does feel like we've missed our golden opportunities and we may now even see over the next competitions that we just regress further and further. But the majority of this squad is very young, they're still gonna develop and there is more to be seen from them. So if you get the right manager in and do it early, things really could turn the corner. But whoever that is, they're gonna have to make some brave decisions because as I say, Harry Kane, he's 30 now, 31 at the end of the month. So he's gonna be 32 going on 33 by the time the World Cup comes around. He's not gonna be in that starting lineup. Carl Walker's gonna retire. He's not gonna be playing at 35. John Stones will be 32. He might still be in and around there, but there's gonna be a few key players to replace. And we just can't do the Portugal Ronaldo thing of just flogging Kane until the end of his career either. 
I think it's going to take a manager to come in and say, here's a new striker, here's how we're playing. Kane, you will have a role to play, but you're not in that starting lineup going forwards. And there is talent in the rest of this squad that is waiting to be utilised. Palmer, I know he came on over the last couple of matches. I know he was used as that super sub. He's a starter now. He's shown that that season with Chelsea was not just a flash in the pan. He is a quality player. He's got to be in that starting lineup for the World Cup. We've got Gordon, we've got Eze, we've got Adam Wharton's come through. We've got a real opportunity here to change the style of play, improve things, bring fresh faces in. But most importantly, it does have to be a fresh face in that manager role for me. Anyway, I'm probably just babbling at this point. Let me know what you think in the comments below yourself, other than just being disappointed. What do you think? Should Southgate go? Should he stay on? Are there any particular players that you would like to see come in? And then we can all move on from the Euros once again. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my Euro 2024 content throughout this tournament. I have enjoyed it. And let's get back to normality now with club football. Cheers.